Hey, Master Gardeners. Today I'm at Third Way Farm in Havity Grace, Maryland. It's a 67 acre plot owned by Tommy Shireman and his wife, Michelle. And they have moved here in 2015 and established a successful commercial and retail business that's worthy of your support. So let's talk about what he does. It's pretty amazing all the different crops they have right now. I was in their market on Friday. I bought myself some delicious white turnips that just are splendid and a salad of spinach. And he's growing all these right in the middle of winter. Well, the question is, can I do this? Can you do this? Yes, we can be doing this in our own yards. So the goal is to help you to learn to, some tips how to extend your growing season. It's not just May to August, there's more to it. So Tommy, first of all, what kind of things are we standing in front of here? What kind of things can they be growing? Absolutely, so we're here in our uh, acre and a half uh, intensive vegetable production. And where we're standing right now, you see probably our uh, star of the winter garden, which is kale. This is green curly leaf kale. As you can see, it's uh, got some snow on it here, but it's still looking green and healthy and nutritious. Um, and so uh, kale, is one of the few crops that we can keep outside like this and it'll still survive uh, often all the way down until about zero degrees um, and we extend the kale's um, season and it's growing and it's uh, quality by covering it with uh, row cover. Stella I'm gonna ask you to get off the row cover. Come here, um, Stella. So th this is uh, um, a poly polyethylene spun fabric um, and there are different weights you can get of this. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty heavy one for the winter. And so this uh, type of fabric, it can buffer the temperature underneath of it up to about five to seven degrees. And so that's really critical um, because um, that'll really help keep the soil warmer on those cold nights. Um, and it, it just really helps the plants to not suffer so much um, from the cold. And so as you can see, our kale here been through even single digits. Okay, okay, let's talk about the hardiness zone map. We've all learned about that. Your zone seven here, would 7A. you say? Seven A. Yep. So by adding this fabric, you can take that from a seven A and drop it to a seven B. And then what if you want to get it even warmer than that? What do you add then? Right, so here we actually have two covers and, and we often practice double or even triple covering at times. And so each cover can add uh, about half a zone to your hardiness. So um, who knew that? You can add a whole zone by adding two layers of fabric. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that he does here is he does those double layers as well as putting plants inside of high tunnels, which might be a little beyond what you guys do. We're gonna look over here at spinach in a minute, but tell him about why we talked about in our last video how hard it is to grow in the winter months and you used a different vocabulary term. Mm -hmm. What term did you use for the photo period? Right, so uh, the main challenge with growing any plants in winter uh, is, is often a matter of daylight, uh, daylight hours in a day, even more so than it is the temperature. Um, and so uh, Elliot Coleman, who is a, a father to many farmers like myself who are trying to practice organic uh, vegetable production, um, he termed this, uh, coined this term Persephone period. And it is the time uh, in your zone uh, at which the number of hours of daylight drops below 10 in a day. Um, and so for us here in zone 7A, uh, that's right around November 9th, 10th, 11th. Um, and so by that point, um, after that point, I should say, uh, the rate of growth of most plants is gonna slow down significantly. Um, and then about in around this time in like early to mid February uh, is when it, the daylight hours bump up above 10 hours a day again. Um, and we start to see like now some, some better growth happening again. Now he says now, but we're in February. So he even told me last week, he's already seeing the plants starting to stimulate because the days are starting to get longer. Mm -hmm. So even February can increase. So what are your other top product or top plants? Let's look what you got over yeah, let, here. Yeah, let's take a quick look over here. Um, so leafy greens really make up the, the most important um, section of our, our production. They are the most nutrient dense vegetables and they are typically the most um, profitable vegetables for us to grow all year, but especially in the winter because they are what we call cut and come again crops. So things like spinach, kale, lettuce, arugula, uh, mustard greens, they're all crops that you eat the leaf. And so when we wanna harvest them, now he's gonna show here. you how to do this because sometimes rookies don't know, but it's nice to cut which parts of the plant. 
Um, so you want to cut the biggest leaves, which are typically the outer leaves, um, and leave these smaller, uh, younger leaves so that they can grow a little bit bigger. Um, especially on a home scale when you don't have tight production um, expectations, it's, it's nice to spend a little more time and really only take those bigger leaves because that's going to leave a little bit more uh, photosynthetic area of the plant intact so that it'll regrow a little bit faster rather than coming in and clear cutting the whole thing. All right, tell them what you're doing in this high tunnel. How many layers do you have on top of that? So we have uh, two layers here that we can put in, uh, put on top of these plants. And so as you can see, uh, this spinach, Ooh. we actually harvested all of Beautiful. this just about two weeks ago. Wow. Um, and so now, especially with these longer uh, hours starting to kick back in, you can see we have really nice full size leaves again in about two weeks. And, and that's really nice. Behind you. behind you, you got a little bit of what? Yeah, and then we have another uh, great winter crop, uh, baby Swiss chard. This is one of the key elements in our uh, custom spring mix, which we do as our, our uh, general salad throughout uh, the whole year. It's 52 weeks we have this product, and chard is one of those items. Um, okay. So here it is looking nice, so nice and healthy. Did I tell the audience where he's distributing from here to Baltimore, supplying restaurants year-round with these different products? So I'll just let you know, this is what my winter garden looks like dead like these cauliflower that's what mine looks like this is what happens when they're not covered yeah if they get this blanched appearance to them and they're shot and gone but had they been covered they would have been preserved and he could have potentially been growing all year long so tell me did i don't think i asked you this question this is called regenerative farming mm -hmm. how do you feel like you embody that partnership with the land and that you know, why do we call you regenerative? Yeah, that's an excellent question. And it's one that we really hope that people start to pay more attention to. Um, and so uh, we really seek to envision our farm uh, as uh, an ecosystem itself. And so we want to uh, grow and produce food in such a way um, in which we are hopefully uh, improving um, all of the quality of life around us, uh, particularly in the soil beneath our feet and especially um, in the plants, animals, uh, waterways and in the air uh, that comprise this environment in which we live, this ecosystem that we call home here at Third Way Farm. So um, being regenerative in a lot of ways, it entails um, not doing just one thing, right? The uh, Perhaps the biggest downfall of our industrial agricultural system is focusing on one thing only, growing only corn, growing only uh, cattle on, on a, and a CAFO. And so we instead are, are trying to bring all of those things together because that's how nature does it. Uh, so we raise a lot of livestock. We have cattle, pigs, sheep, poultry, um, and they're all uh, functioning in a rotational grazing system throughout our farm. Uh, the pigs are in the woods, the cattle and sheep rotate together in our pastures, and the chickens follow them um, in a, as a cleanup crew. And so those are ways in which we are building um, and regenerating the life of the soil uh, throughout all the many different parts of our farm. And then here in our vegetable production, we are practicing uh, no-till style of agriculture. So we use, um, one, we're not using any synthetic fertilizers or chemicals of any kind. Uh, we practice organic growing, although we are not certified. And the most important part of that process is that we are not tilling the soil. We are not disturbing the soil um, because uh, tillage and disturbance of the soil is the most destructive thing to the microorganisms that make soil alive. Um, so, so that's really the what makes the difference. And even more, he's worth a plug because he's very active with Days of Taste, which is a program for youth in Harford County. The school buses visit here. So he's really active at giving back to our community and worthy of your support. So there you go, Master Gardeners.